But there wasn't time to be mentally depressed. There wasn't time for this. No, I've got to go and plow the field for 16 hours. There's no time to be depressed. Depression is a luxury. For you to be depressed or mentally down or what, that's a luxury. Habibi, before you enjoy this video, do your boy a solid. I've got a goal to hit seven and a half thousand subscribers by the end of June. So like the video and subscribe the channel. Social media has completely and utterly changed the world. It's changed the way that we function. It's changed the way that we go out. It's changed even the places we go. Social media now runs the world. We live in an attention society and people will do anything for attention because attention is a currency and you can turn attention into money. Jake Paul is not rich because he's a boxer. He's rich because he used the attention he gets and monetized it via boxing. So in the attention economy we now live in, you have to understand that your attention is valuable, especially as a man. And women are out here today trying to extract your attention from you without returning anything. That's what the male-female friendship is. In the old days, man would give attention in return for sex. But nowadays, men just give attention and don't get any sex back. And that's what you have to be very, very careful of. Your attention is extremely valuable. So for all the men out there, if you're following a woman and you have zero chance of f***ing her and she ain't replying to your DMs, stop following her. <laughs> Man, I mean, there's not really much more I can add to that other than firstly and foremostly, Islam is so perfect because we don't have female friends. There is no such thing as a female friend. And if you look, some of the things that we have been prohibited from doing we understand there's a logical logical reason to it. Drink alcohol, no good for you, kidney failure, etc. Okay, in small amounts it's good for you, but most people can't control themselves. Most people drink too much than what is good for them. Therefore, the harms outweigh the good. Allah says this and acknowledges this in the Quran. When they ask you about alcohol, that there is some good in it. There is some khair in it, but the harm is far greater. But then there are other things that we are prohibited from that we may not necessarily understand why in the moment. We might not necessarily understand ever during our lifetimes, but just know there's a reason for it. And not having female friends is one of those things that we can actually we can actually uncover a logical reason as to why this harms and hinders your ability to get with a woman. It doesn't help you. First of all, iron sharpens iron. The more female friends you have, the softer you become. Bottom line, iron sharpens iron and women are not iron. They are the antithesis of iron. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you are giving her for free, exactly as Andrew just said, what she wants the most from you, whilst you are not getting what you want the most from her. What she wants the most from you is attention. I'm not saying women don't want sex. They do want sex. But she wants attention more. I'm not saying men don't want attention from women. They do want attention from women. But you want sex more. So she is getting what she wants the most, attention, whilst you are not getting nothing in return. And therefore, your attention in her eyes carries no value. It's cheap. It's empty. There's no price tag attached to it. It's free. And she knows on some level of consciousness, the reason why you are giving her that attention is because you have an ulterior motive. You're not who you say you are. You're not really interested in her problems. You don't really care. You just want to slide into her panties. The reality of life for most men is absolutely depressing. I completely understand we talk about male mental so have health. You, so have you suffered from mental health? Fuck no. No? Absolutely not. Because I understood that as a man, you must build yourself. As a female, so, you can be but born. Like, but did you not like, we need to stop going into philosophies and just stuff because I'm actually trying to... I want to understand you. Okay. Right. So, you have you or have you not experienced mental health? No. Zero. Okay. So, how do you cope with stress and situations? Express your emotions when you're frustrated or when you're stressed. Good question. And if, if I'm stressed or I'm frustrated, then I understand it's my time to perform. And I agree that society puts huge pressure on men and it's time for men to perform. As a man, you either perform or you don't. It's, there's, no, there's no safety net like there is for females. Females can wake up and say, I don't feel like it. Yeah, but there is for men. There no, is there isn't. There is. The men who it's say, I can't feel like it, cannot compete with the men who do not say that. And it is player versus player. The man who goes to the gym every single day, regardless of how he feels, will always beat the man who goes to the gym when he feels like going to the gym. And it's player versus player. And let me tell you something. As much as you want to sit here and disagree with me, it's women who decide who the winner is. You will choose the man who's in fantastic shape. You'll choose the man with all his money right. I like a dad bod, personally. <laughs> Please, start the cap. Please, stop the cap. Stop the cap. All right, I'm going to get to that dad bod comment in a moment. 
But um, this is a very important point to address. I was having this discussion with a friend of mine yesterday. And we were discussing the current state of affairs amongst young men and why so many young men in the West, West are so unmotivated. And I said to him, the reason is simple. It's because... They live in a constant state of dull pain with which they have sedated. They are, they are in a state of sedation. How? Well, the pain is there. I'm broke. I don't have a woman by my side. I'm unhappy. I want my situation to change. Okay. But the sedation that they are using to dull the pain is Netflix, is Amazon Prime, is Instagram, TikTok, YouTube on and on so they're in pain oh pff, not to mention porn and all the rest of it forgot all about those vices they're in pain but instead of acting upon that pain by taking productive steps forward to change their situation instead they allow they allow themselves to sedate that pain with all of the things i've just listed because it's just easier it's just easier to not have to face the reality of the pain that you're in by sedating yourself. Back in the day, if you were in that situation 100, 150 years ago, there was there was nothing to sedate yourself with. There was no sh social media. There was no Pornhub. There was no, you name it. It was either I change my situation or we die. Bottom line. And anyways, men were so engrossed with the day-to-day -day aff affairs of running their lives that there wasn't time to be mentally depressed. There wasn't time for this. No, I've got to go and plow the field for 16 hours. There's no time to be depressed. Depression is a luxury. For you to be depressed or mentally down or what that's a luxury. Let me say let me say that again. For you to be depressed or to feel mentally down and out and so on, this is a luxury that was simply not afforded to our ancestors of old. They didn't have the time for it. They didn't have the the mental space for it. There was no free time and sedation for them to be able to experience this luxury. So if you have the luxury of mental illness, not mental illness, of depression, I should say, specifically depression, mental illness, we can go, it's a different ballpark, a different discussion, but depression, you could argue depression is a form of mental illness, whatever. All right, you've got too much free time. In his book, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about, he gives a fascinating parable he says one of the reasons why so many men and women, but he was talking about men's mind unravel is not because of too much pressure, but because of a lack of pressure. He mentions how engineers, when they want to strengthen the foundations of a bridge, a bridge, okay, that has suddenly become loose and, and it's no longer a stable. What do they do? They place a weight-bearing load on top of the bridge to make it sturdy again and to secure the structure just as when you're at the beach and you make a sandcastle and that sandcastle starts to fall apart. What's your instinctive reaction? You put your hands on top of it and start patting it down, applying pressure to make the, the, the sand particles come back together again to sort of solidify together. The bridge is the same. It's starting to fall apart. Let's put a load on top of it to strengthen the structure. Your mind is the same. If you have the luxury of experiencing depression or whatever the case may be, it may well be because your mind is unraveling from a lack of pressure. Okay, well then maybe you're, a, you're an exception because you're an angel. But in general, we're talking in general generalizations because exceptions do not disprove you. And I didn't address the dad bod comment. The reason why so many women say, oh, I quite like a dad bod, is that it's utter nonsense. They don't actually like the dad bod. But a man who is in, in exceptionally good shape, he casts a sharp contrast on her if she isn't also in exceptionally good shape. It makes her feel inferior because she's not quite as exceptionally tight or looking as, as fit and conditioned as he is. And that makes her feel a certain type of way. So when women say, oh, I like a dad bod, cap. What they actually are telling you is, when a man's in exceptional shape, he makes me feel insecure because I'm not in exceptional shape as well. So many riddles when dealing with women, bruv, honestly. Rule. Females will choose the man who's in fantastic shape. Females will choose the man who's got his money right. Females will choose the man who can fix any problem. Females will choose the man when they can go to him and say everything's 
can you fix this? And he says, yes, without panicking. That's who women want. Women decide who the winner is. Women don't want the man when you come to him with your problems and he goes, oh, I'm too stressed today. Tell me tomorrow. No. Women don't want that. Yeah, but women also don't want a dickhead. But having your life in order doesn't make you a dickhead. Look how she's resorting to extremes once again. He didn't say women want a dickhead. But just because a man's got his life in order doesn't mean that he's a dickhead. You see, resorting to, to extremes does not prove or disprove your point. And this is why it's very difficult to have a logical discussion slash debate with a woman because she's always going to resort to these emotional arguments. You can have all those things, right. but then there's that fine line where your ego gets a bit too much. For example, like you could be very successful. You can have good looking women that are attracted to you. You can just have all those qualities. Right. But then once you possess that, you then suddenly can go past that line, your ego, then you start to become an arsehole. I agree with you, but I'm not talking about that. I think that's a separate conversation. Andrew does this thing, by the way, he's absolutely brilliant. Instead of directly disagreeing with her, he uses a tactic called agree and escalate. <laughs> so instead of saying, I disagree, he just says, I agree. And then he says, but so on and so on and so on. And then he finishes his point. But because he says, I agree first, it disarms her mind. And she's actually open to listening to what he has to say. It's called agree and escalate. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, no, I agree with everything. That's what I'm saying. Like for me, I agree with everything you're saying. But what I'm trying to argue is that men get successful. They become even more narcissistic. And they just are not nice people to be around. You're very, very smart. Thank you. You are. But you're doing what most females do. And you're conflating issues. <laughs> so when you conflate, what you do is you mix two issues together to try and prove your point. No, I'm actually, I've just been asking you personal questions Correct. and every time you give me a philosophy. No, it's not it. a philosophy. No, but I'm saying in general, when I'm asking you, I'm trying to get to know you on a level. How does a woman like me get to know a gentleman like you? Here at this beautiful... You don't, bruv. <laughs> nice civil dinner we're having here with no, with no animosity at all. You asked me about men's mental health. My answer was explaining that as a man, you don't have the luxury Oops, I don't feel like it. You can do but it. You can, but some, but I'm sorry, I, I keep cutting you, but I'm just like, because this is the part that gets really frustrating for me. Like, men with this mindset that you have, like, I get it. Okay, great. You are alpha. You've achieved it's all these things. Alpha. No, but I'm saying, like, you possess all these. It's great. But you are the problem. You're creating this pressure on men and society. Like, no, it's so I'm not creating a pressure. But, you, but you, men can actually, successful men can actually be like, oh, okay, I don't actually feel like it today. Like, they actually can. I understand. And Andrew's about to address this, but notice her, 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 the wording she used. Successful men can actually say, you know what? I don't feel like it today. You're right. I agree, babe. Successful men. But that's the prerequisite. The majority of men aren't successful in damn near anything. Hence why they're invisible to you in the first place. And I would say, even if you become successful, that motivation that you need as a man to continue striving forward in life can only be fueled by setting a new goal, by moving the bar again and again and again. And at that point, it's no longer about survival or just making ends meet. It's about, I need this new goal in my life to keep me functional up here. I need that pressure the hands on the sandcastle, the weight load, the weight, the load, the weight bearing load on the bridge to keep my mind well put together. The break and rest at that I understand. My point is that it's player versus player. And if you're a man who's going to constantly give in to mental health problems or mental health trouble, you're not going to be able to compete with the men who don't. Okay, but can we That's validate it. men that have. Completely. If you have mental health, so we're not. We can't go play a play. Just validate men that have mental health issues. Absolutely. Okay. Men who have mental health issues. I hope them. I wish them the best in the world. Okay, great. But when they come to me and say, and I get this all the time, Andrew, I have this problem. I'm depressed and I can't go to the gym. I say no. I disagree. You're depressed because you don't go to the gym. If you go to the gym, you might start to feel better, okay. right? I'm saying you can't sit as a man and afford the luxury of saying, I have a mental health issue today. I'm sad today. I'm stressed today. I'm emotional today. I can't work because. You will lose against the men who don't do that. And male, the male world is more competitive than you could possibly imagine. And it's the women who pick the winners. So it's, okay. I, find it, I find it very interesting that a woman sits here to me and says, no, men are allowed to sit around and do yeah, fuck all and no, feel no, sad. No, and no. those are the men they ignore no. when they DM. No, 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 no. <laughs> those are the men they ignore and they ignore them all. No, actually, can I, just, can I just chime in here? So, for example, everything you've said, you've possessed, you've proved your point. Right, but as a high value woman, if I respect and love my partner, I'm not putting that pressure. Uh, first of all, okay, there are no high value women except by a woman who has actually paired up and married with a high value man. All right. Let me say that again. There are no high value women that exist in and of themselves except a woman who has paired up with a high value man. That is how you become high value. 
as a woman because his status confers off it rubs off onto you it has a halo effect onto you hence why women are hypergamous in the first place if you are a high value woman you wouldn't be looking for a higher value man you are constantly looking for your superior for someone who is at a higher station than you as a man why because he confers that status onto you in any case, I believe this woman's in her mid-30s. She's a single mom as well. So, I mean, she looks young for her age. I think she's mid-30s. So she doesn't look mid-30s to her credit. But still, I mean, come on, man. I would say, babe, you know what? You can have a little rest. Like, there are women that actually enable men to feel, process that emotion. Agreed. But yeah, so we'll still go back to tomorrow. Okay. Agreed. Let's go back to work, work, work. But there are good women out there that don't put that pressure. I feel like your reality on women is warped no, because of a certain you. caliber of no. women. Yes, it is. I agree. You're right. But you need to agree and escalate. <laughs> You're missing a very vital point of that story. You're right. But the, as a high value woman, before you say to that man, you can have a day off and you're allowed to be sad today. You will only even get with him. Let me change that. You will only even acknowledge he exists if he's ignored how he feels 99% of the time before that. Mm -hmm. Because if he was sad most of the time before that, he never would have got to a place where he could attract a woman like you. The man who works in Starbucks who's sad all the time, you won't reply to him. Ne neither will any other female. So for women to come along and pretend they give a f about the fact that most men are basic, most men are basically invisible. There is not a female on the planet who's invisible today. You can be a four, overweight, fat, you'll still go to the club and get attention. 99% of the men go to the club and nobody even fucking talks to them. If they try and talk to a girl, they get blanked and ignored and told to f Most men are absolutely not really invisible. This is the truth about masculinity, right? It's very easy for women to sit here and complain about the top 2% of men because I've dealt with this guy, he's arrogant, blah, 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 blah. Most men don't even f***ing exist. They send 10,000 DMs and never even get read, let alone replied to. So if you just sit here and say, I'll get a G, a big G, a boss, a millionaire, and let him have a day off, very nice of you. I'm sure you would. Yeah. But... <laughs> Look at her face. Yeah. Of course you would. He's the big G. He's the big boss. If you got, if a guy who wanted to have days off all the time, he never would have got important enough in the first place to attract a woman like you. And that is the reality. As a man, it's player versus player. It's ultimately competitive. And as a man, you have to outcompete the other men who are prepared to get up and do it anyway. That's how it works. There's no such thing as saying, I'm sad, I need two weeks off. Not as a man if you want to be important. Maybe as a chick, you don't always put more foundation on and be hot again. Great. Not as a man. If you want to be important as a man, you have shit to do. You have duties. This is how it exists. This is how it's always been. You know, I'm listening to Andrew Huberman podcast right now. I think that's his name. The neuroscientist, I believe he's a neuroscientist. And it's on dopamine, dopamine regulation. I haven't gotten through all of it yet. But he mentioned at the beginning of that podcast that if you are struggling to find that motivation to move forward with what you need to do, you are probably experiencing low dopamine levels. And those who are motivated generally have high higher dopamine levels but let me tell you this if you are constantly flooding your brain your mind with dopamine hits which i i know is a scientifically inaccurate term but i'm a layman so let's just carry let's just run with it with dopamine hits through the consumption of porn through app hopping whatsapp instagram youtube we've all been guilty of that for that matter telegram and all the rest of it if you are overly flooding your mind with these constant dopamine hits you are going to uh, inevitably experience peaks and then massive drop drop offs the idea is to maintain a stable level of dopamine production in your body not completely remove it and not have these huge spikes so gentlemen motivation quite honestly is for losers most of the time if you are doing what you need to take care of doing believe me you're not going to feel motivated to do it. That's another luxury that you don't have time for. You don't have time for the luxury of motivation, just as you don't have time for the luxury of depression.